Hello YouTube, happy Halloween. For today, since today is Halloween, I thought I'd give you guys the scariest paper I've ever read. And just talk a little bit about why it's so, why to me this is such an impactful paper. Make sure you watch this video till the end because this will touch upon a few different topics about machine learning and how this paper really demonstrates why machine learning can be so hard to break into for so many people. And also what this paper specifically did and some of the interesting takeaways I had from it. It's not going to be super long, uh, but I will link a Medium article in the de uh, comments below. Check it out for more details on the paper, and obviously the paper itself will be linked in the description. So check that out. If you find this interesting or if you come across any other interesting papers or ideas, uh, use one of my social media links to reach out to me, and let's go. So this paper is called Multiplying Matrices Without Multiplying. And just as the name suggests, what it aims to do is not find exact multiplications, but approximate mu matrix multiplication. So if I gave you two matrices A and B, this is essentially what the paper was out to do. And you might be a little bit intimidated looking at, at this, like what the hell is this saying? All this is basically trying to say is we're trying to minimize the error in such a way that, you know, no matter how small the error we pick for the matrix multiplication of AB, no matter how small the error we have with this, it's going to be bigger than uh, whatever, you know, whatever approximation we come up with. And that's the basic computational problem. And what does this, why is this important? Think about, think about a lot of m uh, machine learning concepts. A lot of these machine learning is represented as uh, data sets. Uh, of the data points are represented as uh, uh, matrices and multi-dimensional matrices, not necessarily two-dimensional. And when it comes to that, what we have are we basically have, you know, we have two matrices. One might be A, which is N by D, and the other is B, D by M. What this means is A will have N rows and D columns, and B will have uh, D rows and M columns. And when would this be the case? Think about um, your softmax or any other linear transformation where AB will give you a final, where A times B will give you the final prediction. And that's one of the use cases they have here, which is they're trying to approximate softmax classifiers. You know, in a neural network, you might have 20, 10, 20. For this huge neural networks, you might have so many softmax classifiers. And as you're iterating through the learning process, they'll be called over and over again. So if you could do a, if you had a very quick way to speed up the computation there, you would save up, you would save, save tons of computational resources. So th there's obviously a little bit of a trade off that you're saving resources, but having lower accuracy. So the goal is uh, be build the best classifier that is both fast and somewhat accurate. And that's what these guys did. They showed that with their current uh, softmax classifier, you know, it's able to it's able to it, it's able to stay accurate so even when you have a different uh, you, even when you have the c500 data set which is an image data set if you which you would know if you're following my content make sure you are to come across more such concepts they are able to basically uh, sorry they are able to approximate uh, pretty consistently ab above a 75% accuracy which is pretty good and their method has like has a you know the speed up is quite a bit more orders of magnitude higher than the others and I guess the reason why I wanted to why th I had a, such a difficult time with this paper and why this paper in general is so like should is so important for beginners to understand is that this is the kind of paper which really shows you the guts of machine learning. Machine learning is a multi-dimensional field, you know, it borrows on concepts from math, physics, uh, not ph uh, physics at times, but math, um, common sense, economics, you know, a lot of its designs are very, very complex. And uh, obviously we, we use neurons, etc., like the structure of a brain in neural networks, but it's co there's so much coding involved. There's so many different moving parts to it. And most people today, they look at machine learning, they, they, they have taken, they just think it's um, build neural network, fit data, done, you're done. 
you know if you're more advanced you might be you might try to start look at overfitting analysis evaluations that's all great and those are parts of the machine learning pipeline but a lot of machine learning comes in the setup you actually setting up your experiment etc or setting up your systems and that can be very complex and that requires a very thorough and deep understanding of the basics and you know once you have an understanding of the basics you're able to combine see like they're they what they combine is hashing averaging and by shuffling in order to create approximations that are much much faster than what we have currently and if you are able to build from the basics find what you're interested in build up your theoretical knowledge not just not just learn how to keras and you know tensorflow everything but actually have a deep fund foundational theoretical knowledge you will be able to do very well in machine learning uh, so uh, i just thought i'll end this video with a few like cases where um, like a few reasons why this these assumptions like wh what would this assumption be for example if you understood like if you don't know why what if you can't if you don't have the basic knowledge you might not see what is this assumption n greater than uh, much greater than d greater than m so when might this be the case so you know think about when this would be the case and one of these cases might be where a is basically your data points input data matrix and b is your weights matrix transposed so a would have be n samples with d different dimensions you know and the me mat b matrix would just be the weights of those different samples uh, dimensions for different samples and with your final then when you multiply in this case we have a soft max for this specific example but could be any general computational value which is then fed in to other cases in all these cases machine learning is going to i mean sorry in all of these cases um, it's going to you're going to have a much faster approximation and if you don't understand the basics you would not be able to appreciate why the approximation exists and you might try to implement this in a situation where it's not applicable so i just wanted to end that on end it on that note um as always if you think i'm missing something or have any feedback on this video let me know i don't want this to go on too long uh, social media in the descriptions below if you're prepping for your coding interviews check out my sub stack if you're interested in more of my if you're interested in any specific video topics etc comment them or reach out to me through social media that's it peace